This week on Moving Markets, a look at earnings from the Malaysian banking sector, Petronas posts a narrow net loss in the most recent quarter, the FBM KLCI suffered a steep sell-off in the last trading day of the month, and Salesforce buys slack in one of the biggest tech deals of 2020. Corporate Malaysia has wrapped up the third quarter earnings season and overall we saw relatively strong results due to the relaxation of the movement control order imposed earlier this year. In focus this time were the banks which had underperformed in the COVID-19 era. The sector's earnings were mixed with Public Bank and RHB Bank exceeding expectations while CIMB missed. We know that bank earnings have already been under pressure with anemic loan growth of less than 5%, weaker net interest margins and lower interest income. Earnings have also been depressed as banks are on the conservative side and allocate higher loan loss provisions in case of a rise in defaults and bad loans. Prudent practice considering the challenging economic environment with a potential rise in unemployment which is currently at 4.6% after hitting a high of 5.3% in May. However, these loan loss allowances are usually preemptive. Since banks have front-loaded their provisioning, it is likely to normalize in the subsequent quarters. Moving forward, the key thing about banks is that as vaccines start to be rolled out and the global economy increasingly recovers, we're likely to see a rotation into the sector. Banks are also a barometer of the general economy and a good proxy to the anticipated recovery, which explains why Public Bank, May Bank and even CIMB are up 48, 17 and 23 percent respectively from their March lows. National oil and gas producer Petronas announced a loss of 3.4 billion ringgit in the most recent quarter, but this was a narrower loss from the quarter before. Revenue grew by 21% from the previous quarter thanks to improved commodity prices. But while oil prices have rebounded strongly in the past month due to vaccine news, volatility is likely to continue as near-term risks remain. After all, parts of the world are still imposing lockdowns which dampens demand especially for jet and driving fuel, while OPEC, the group of oil exporting countries has just agreed to a small increase of the supply in January. For Petronas, the challenging global environment and volatile oil prices have already resulted in cost-cutting measures, which does not bode well for domestic oil and gas service providers, such as Ozma and Valesto Energy, which depend heavily on Petronas contracts. Unsurprisingly, Ozma is still down 41% year-to-date, while Valesto is trailing behind with a 60% decline. On the last trading day of November, the FBM KLCI plunged 2.8% with a particularly sharp sell-down on the banks in the final 30 minutes of trading. Reasons for this sharp decline include a rebalancing of the MSCI global indices, which is widely followed by passive funds like exchange-traded funds. These indexes are not static, they are periodically reviewed to better reflect the respective markets. Every quarter, some stocks become included or excluded from the index or their weightage within the index might change. Changes to the index weightings then lead to price action as these passive funds will automatically adjust their portfolio to mimic the indices to reduce tracking error. The review of the MSCI saw no new additions from Malaysia, although two names were taken off the list, Carlsberg Brewery Malaysia and YTL Corp. However, we did see some re-weighting, particularly among the banks, which explains the last-minute market correction. Deal season is back, and given the recurrent work-from-home themes we saw in markets this year, it should be no surprise that Salesforce is buying slack for about 28 billion US dollars. This will be one of the biggest tech deals this year. But why is a customer relationship management service like Salesforce interested in Slack, a workplace communication platform? What is the synergy? Well, this is part of the structural shift towards cloud software. Salesforce could possibly leverage on Slack as the front end for its other tools. It also gives the company an edge against Microsoft Teams, a direct competitor. Slack shares closed almost 38% higher on this news. And that's what's been moving markets.